Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I wanted to show you guys how I did the stain and paint job and like all of the finishing for a purse that I made recently. A lot of the same basic techniques for like cutting it out and tooling and everything like that I've covered in some of my other videos and I didn't really want to bog it down and make it a very long tutorial by focusing on those aspects as well. I do have a tutorial coming out soon though covering all the intricacies of making your own purse but the techniques I'm showing you today you could use on a wallet, on armor, on a purse, on uh, whatever you want really. If it's leather you can do it. So let's go ahead and get started. So for this project um, I'm using Super Sheen as a repel. You can also use the Fibings repel or acrylic resiline um, but Super Sheen is what I had on hand. You can use the cap for a palette, but um, here I'm just using a regular little like paint tray because I am going to be mixing in some different pigments. The super sheen is, as we put on different layers of it, it's going to dry and repel, and today I'm mixing in some Sunset Gold Pearlex Mica Pigments. Um, it's going to give us a really nice kind of shimmery metallic look without really having to worry about like glitter getting everywhere or you know any paints or anything so super fast forward mode now and I'm just getting a little bit of the pearlex in with the super sheen and painting it on the, almost as though I'm mixing my own acrylic paint and uh, it kind of it could have benefited from a base layer color like uh, the whatever color the leather is, is going to show through just a little bit. So if I had used like a black stain or something first, it would have given me a much more like dark and antiqued gold. But I knew I was going to be going over all of this with some tan toned antique gel. So I figured a nice like kind of tan undertone on it would be okay. But that's something that like you could stain it entirely blue first and get some really interesting effects coming through. It, it warrants some experimentation, that is for sure. And a little goes a long way with this stuff, but I'm trying to be generous enough that I'm any brush strokes that get left will like balance out, but not so much that it's gonna be, you know, taking forever to dry or clumpy or you know overflow the boundaries. And I really enjoy an angle brush because it get, it has so many different tips and surfaces. Um, so you can have the fine point tip to get into those areas. You have a broad flat side to pull a lot of pigment. And it's just a bit of round brush works just as well too. Use whatever's preferable to you. Because it's not exactly about how you get there. It's just getting there. <laughs> And so now I'm going through and doing a second layer, and you can see this is helping to eliminate a lot more of the brush strokes. Now, if you don't want to go the acrylic resiline and pearlex route, or super sheen and pearlex, uh, Lumiere paints by uh, Jacquard do very well on leather, like extremely well. Um, and oh, crazily enough, uh, pearlex is actually by Jacquard as well, so very similar results that you can get but with different products and that way you don't have to mix it yourself and just different options for you all to choose from. Now there will be links down in the video description below. Man you can really see like how shiny that is. And so I'm going through now just kind of moving all of that Prolex over into the um into the what's it called, Super Sheen, and I'm using a green water-based dye. This is EcoFlow Professional, and just with um, a sponge, like a sponge brush, I'm painting the edges, being very careful because I don't want to get this dark green anywhere else on the leather. So I'm holding it carefully and just kind of brushing along, and now, still trying to be controlled about it, I'm painting along the edges that we've established with like a wing divider and stuff, but... Again, these same techniques could be used for whatever kind of border that you have. Again, being real careful to not, um, <laughs> well, try not to get le leather stain everywhere. I want to be nice and clean about it, which is really hard for me. I'm not a naturally, like, clean and tidy leather worker. You know, some folks are amazing at making, like, really sleek stuff, and I'm like, that's the hardest thing in the world for me <laughs> is try to make something sleek. 
So I had scooped all of the Pearlex back over into the Super Sheen and now I'm using it as a finish to go over the wet green. If I had let it dry a little longer it wouldn't have blended and lightened up as much but I did want to give just a nice gold over sheen to it. And this is a similar technique if I hadn't put the Pearl X into the Super Sheen and I had let the stain dry you could go over it with you know just the plain Super Sheen or something to protect that stained color um, that paint uh, from the antique gel layer that we'll be putting on later just going through being real generous with it because at this point like the damp leather is just going to keep soaking in and soaking in more of that resiline. So I'm trying to get as much in on this first layer as I can because once it dries, it's going to begin stacking on itself. And here I'm experimenting using, there's still a lot of green pigment in it, and I panic trying to find something to wipe up <laughs> with, um, with the green pigment still in the sponge. I'm just sopping up the rest of that acrylic uh, super sheen. And trying to just, I don't know, experiment a little bit, see if I can't add a little bit more green in there. And I'm really happy, honestly, with the results. Like, I'm really pleased with how it came out. Doing a quick brush over on all the edges, which I've, I've done the beveling and stuff, but I haven't done any slicking because I do want it to penetrate nicely. Now, this is a tan antique gel by, uh, again, EcoFlow. I really enjoy their products through the Tandy Leather uh, stores that I get them from and I'm real generous with this stuff just globbing it on there and rubbing it into all of the different nooks and crannies some folks like to use um, sponges or sheep's wool or different things like that to apply it but I found for my own personal preference I really just like some nitrile you know rubber gloves because you can see there just that little bit that came off on the paper towel that was all the pigment that was getting soaked up, or for lack of a better term, soaked up. Whereas with a sponge, I feel like so much of it is getting soaked up. So I just have some pads of clean paper towel that I'm spritzing water on and rubbing off the excess antique gel. And then uh, I try to keep folding to it a fresh surface, checking to make sure I haven't messed up the back a whole bunch, and just really putting some elbow grease into it to get up all of the excess pigment. And you can see it gives us a nice, you know, tan tone. I've dipped my finger in and, like, kind of spot checked uh, where, like, the antique gel wasn't thick enough to start with. Now here I'm using a high-performance reducer for airbrushing, but... I've experimented and using just straight water seemed to get exactly the same results with a brown EcoFlow water-based dye. I really like using alcohol and water-based dyes in my airbrush, not so much oil-based. I wouldn't recommend those. And I've just put in some of the reducer, mixed it up, attached it to my airbrush, which there will be links down in the video description to where you can get your own airbrush. This one was gifted to me by my friend Carol, which I really appreciate. And it's just a great way to be able to do a light coat of color. Here you can see I'm doing the strap for the purse. And it's kind of uh, not a fine science for sure. I'm still trying to figure out, you know, the airbrush and my spray station. And, like, I need to put, like, a, a hanging rack that way I don't, I just feel clumsy with it. But I am just have it pinned up against the wall of my spray, spray booth and um, just spraying all the leather. Or the sides of it and because it normally on the underside of leather just seems to really soak up so much of the stain and so being able to airbrush that on there I feel like gets really nice results using almost a third of as much dye now here you can see to get the edges I've just rolled it up and then airbrushing the roll like the side of the roll that way the edges are stained also and hanging that up to dry and here I just have a piece of a I call it squishy mat. It's like closed cell foam, I think. I don't know. They're the impact mats that you stand on in the, like the gym. Uh, but I use that that way uh, if I'm changing colors, I just swap out the squishy mats and that way I don't cross contaminate like wet colors or anything. I'm messing about with my needle and then now you can see here it's really it goes on pretty light. But you can just add and build because it's always easier to go back and add more than it is to be like, uh-oh, that's way too dark. 
I'm coming in and just really filling in, trying to not get too much, you know, overlap because I don't want it to be splotchy. <clears throat> My hand's pretty tired at this point. Like, this was like the fifth project I'd airbrushed that day. So, I'm trying to get all the nooks and crannies. It's uh, The flesh side of this was a little bit, like, pithy. So, it was uh, kind of difficult to get a nice even coverage. Bringing it up to vertical to try to get, and I ran out. Oh, no. So... Putting a little bit more of the stain in there, a little bit more of the reducer. Now with airbrushing, it was very, very daunting and still is, honestly, but I just, I focus on cleaning my airbrush so much all the time. <laughs> like, uh, because the people who are more experienced than myself have been like, yeah, you can't clean it too much. Like, just keep doing what you're doing, you'll do fine. I was like, okay, but um, I don't know. It, it, this, honestly, just doing the back sides of the leather felt really straightforward and doable. So I was like, I think I can do this. And I'm just adding up, building up layers and layers. You can see it was starting to pull a little bit. And I'm doing a little bit more a second coat on the uh, uh, belt strap. But yeah, so you can see a little bit better just pinning it and... Now I've let everything dry, and that was something that before I did the antique gel, I let it dry completely, like about four or five hours. And so I'm going through with Aussie Wax, which is like a beeswax and oil blend, and just buffing that into the surface of the leather. And I find that that not only seals it, but it helps repel water, and it conditions the leather. It makes it really nice. I really like using this horsehair brush um, for, like, sh shoe shining because it gets into all the little crevices. And I put a little bit too much uh, for what I probably should have on the back side of this leather, so I'm buffing it in. It ended up uh, soaking in just fine though. But yeah, again, it's always easier to go back and add more than it is to try to take some off. So now I'm going through, putting in a little bit more elbow grease, doing the edge slicking. And that is basically <laughs> In a nutshell, how I did this style of paint job, which I felt like gave a lot of depth, a couple of different tones. It was really fun to get to do a lot of like kind of painting, painting, which is very cathartic. It's not just slapping some antique gel on. So I was really, I was really pleased with that buffing it with just some clean denim. But yeah, and that's how I did it. Hey y'all, thanks so much for hanging out with me for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. Uh, I do hope that this was helpful to you. Um, I know that with leather working, there's so many different routes that you can take to get similar results. And it, I know for myself, it, I, I would very easily get overwhelmed with like, well, there's like five different products that do the same thing. Which one do I use? Am I using it right? Like, oh, I don't know. And the biggest, the best advice that I wish I could go back and give myself is like, just pick one and do it. Just whatever you have on hand, just do it. <laughs> you'll, you'll get the hang of it. You'll build more confidence. You'll get more experience under your belt. And the more you do it, the you know more you'll have learned and the more you'll have to draw from for future projects. So again, I thought by sharing my experience uh, with this one project, <laughs> Um, might lend y'all some insight for your own projects or for you to see it and be like I'm not doing it that way <laughs> so um, if you enjoy my tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them as well as participate in my craft crates my digital download content my behind the scenes content and all the different things that we do here at Back to Earth Creations please consider bleh, please consider joining me over on Patreon if you see the tripod shaking it's because my cat is rubbing on it. Are you serious? <laughs> She's a cutie. Upper management has to come in and micromanage. Um, but yeah, feel free to check us out over on Patreon. You don't even have to be a pledger. Like, pledges do start at just a dollar a month, but I post all sorts of stuff that you can access even if you're just following with a Patreon account. So, um, <laughs> also please like share subscribe tell your friends all that good stuff but until next time y'all happy crafting bye